I'm 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 the uh, Dr. Sali um, from National Microfinance Bank. Um, I my presentation is uh, going to uh, is going in this direction. Um, I will start with the introduction, then objectives uh, of the scheme, activities covered, and funding. Then um, the scheme that's um, in terms of looking at the loan limit, cost, price, and interest, and duration. Then what are the requirements or documentation required to access the operational steps as well? Um, in terms of background, the agribusiness, small, medium, and investment um, is an initiative of bankers' committee. Uh, it was established in 2017. Um, the, you know, I, I, if you are not aware, what we call bankers' committee, the committee of bankers. Uh, MDs of the banks that come together uh, with a common purpose. So they, um, they were mandated by Central Bank to team up and come up with idea on how to support agri and SME. So uh, they agree uh, to contribute their own quota toward addressing the financing gap in agri and, agri and SME. So the policy intend to support um, uh, intend to support uh, the government policy promoting agricultural, micro, small, um, medium enterprise as a vehicle for economic growth and uh, in, uh, uh, employment generation. So it's DNB. If I say DNB, meaning deposit money bank, that is commercial bank. I expected to contribute five percent uh, profit after tax annually to the funds. So let's see uh, bank A, bank B, bank C. I expected to contribute five percent from their profit after tax. Yeah, so uh, at the end of the day, they were able to gather money. So they said, "Okay, what we need to do with this money? We are going to lend this money to uh, agri and SME sector. It's going to be at a very, very, very cheap rate for people to access the money and establish their own business and then uh, move forward, rather than going to commercial bank and, and, and take loans of let's say thirty percent interest or twenty five percent interest." So um, as an SMU, agri uh, uh, inclined person, so you have opportunity to partake in this. And the skin has been running for like, over three years now. So um, looking at the objective of the scheme, um, the scheme aim at uh, improve, um, improve affordable and sustainable finance by agri business businesses. Micro, small, and medium enterprises. That's one of the objectives of the scheme. Uh, because if you look at the number of SMEs, they have potential, we have SMEs that have potential and fantastic idea to grow and develop. But because of the access to finance, that inhibits their ability to grow or expand their business. There is also opportunity for employment generation in Nigeria because uh, that's what, what's called, what they call job metrics. If you give up out somebody loan, they are, you are creating six or five both direct and indirect jobs. Like if you give a loan to let's say one person, so that person must do somebody that will manage the business. You must also get a security man that will guard the business and the owner of the business. These are direct jobs created under one single loan uh, that is being created. Then there is indirect loan. If you give out loan, that enterprise or individual must pay tax uh, to the uh, the or to the tax authority. So thereby, that will boost also the, uh, the revenue uh, in the state. There is also input supplies or vendors because if you are uh, going into uh, agri or SME, you must buy something from uh, from vendors as an input. So that will also impact the uh, job creation. There is also another objective. There is the need to boost managerial capacity of agri entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs through into corporate organization in line with federal government agenda. What it means for you to have passed through training, EDI training, means you must have acquired some um, knowledge or managerial skills to be able to effectively and efficiently manage your business. And that will give you some, uh, some sort of um, uh, training or some, some sort of idea on how to manage financial uh, cash flow, how to manage your businesses, how to develop your own balance sheet, how to develop your own cash flow, how to manage your own cash flow. 
or like before for those that do not pass through the EDI training. Uh, if, yeah, they will assume they are making profit, but if they ha don't have the record, written record, don't be able to uh, differentiate between uh, whether the business is progressing or otherwise. So attending the training is one of the objectives for people to be able to have that skill, managerial capability or managerial capacity to manage their business effectively. And the business, uh, the scheme is covering uh, majorly three aspects now at the moment. The first is agricultural value chain, which we're looking at production, input supply, storage, processing, logistics, and marketing. If I say uh, agricultural value chain, the entire process of agri, be it production, be it marketing, be it input supply, be it storage, be it logistic or processing of agricultural input. So if you have this kind of um, um, uh, uh, opportunity that I think is good for you, um, I think. Okay, that's uh, looking at the agricultural value chain. Then the other aspect is SME. We actually categorize SME into two. There's SME a real, real sector, there's SME in service sector. If you're looking at um, SME in real sector, you're looking at the manufacturing, mining, petrochemical activities, the scheme is also covered. Then then if you look if you look at also SME in service sector, uh, that is talking about the information and communication technology or creative industry. But if I say creative industry, I'm looking at I'm looking about the fashion, that uh, music in the industry, filmmaking and the rest. We also still also cover that aspect. Uh, then other aspect is um, it may be the time timing by CBN from time to time. Central bank may decide to say, okay, um, there is something new in the system. So they may say, okay. Okay, so let's look at the uh, uh, business uh, case for, for that uh, imagine business. So let's see if we're going to come up with something. So for now, we have we are actually focusing on three major aspects: agricultural value chain, uh, SME real sector, and then cyber sector. Uh, that's uh, then we are also looking at um, the non pricing and chain you know, that's of the scheme. So one needs to know uh, what the funds is all about. Okay, the funds is going to be disposed to deposit money bank. Like I say, if I say deposit money banks, I mean financial bank, microfinance bank, and other financial institutions. And it comprises both term loan and working capital. If I say term loan, it's a loan facility that is long chain uh, in terms of the duration. Anything above one million, uh, anything above uh, one year is considered as time loan. Anything below one year is considered as time loan. Time loan, there's a difference between time loan and time loan. Time, as I mean, T I M E loan. There's also term loan. That's T E R M loan. That one is a long term loan. That's term loan. And then it comprises as well working capital. So, uh, working capital is like a working capital for day to day running of the business, while term loan is for um, equipment finance or invoice uh, finance. So what, what it means, uh, if you are applying for this loan, uh, we're not going to give you 100% cash. So your loan must com comprise the equ equipment invoicing or equipment financing and working capital. Uh, the working capital is 30%, while the, the equipment is 70%. Uh, assuming you want to go into of poultry farming. So you just have to get a vendor or uh, link you up with a vendor that will, will credit his account or her account with 70% as equipment to provide you with the necessary stock and then inputs to be able to set up a poultry business. While the 30% is working capital, we give you cash that when you went, that will take care of you. Uh, linear expense, maybe renting of the place, setting of the place, and and the rest. Assuming your loan amount is ten million, so we buy equipment worth seven million, while we give you uh, thirty million worth of working capital. And then uh, all the equipment that we're going to buy, we're going to register them with national collateral registry. Uh, national collateral registry is an agency under CBN as well, uh, with the mandate to register all movable and non-movable assets in case of default. For instance, you buy a, a car 
you just register the cards or collateral and then you go on with your business and then you default then we take ownership. We just register our interest in the car. If you default, we just take ownership of the car. And then and then the loan limit under this scheme, the highest or the highest amount you can get is 10 million. Uh, it's 10 million in the sense that uh, uh, it, it comprises both in, um, equipment and working capital. So the 70% under under is going to be 7 million, while the working capital is um, 3 million. Uh, while in terms of pricing, that is I'm talking about interest, it's probably signed to be based. While the MDM base will charge not more than 4%. So if you look at it that way, it means the loan should not be more than 9% all inclusive. So EM base will take it as 5%, they'll make their mark of not more than 4%. They may decide to take 2%, which will make it like 7% or 8%, that's 3%, or 4%, that is 9%. But the pricing should not be more than 9%. And um, uh, that's on that is. Uh, while the term is seven years, that's up to seven years, depending on the gestation or nature of the business. If a business requires just one year or two years, we'll just avail you with loan to uh, of less than um, so amount at less than two years, three years. Uh, however, we give moratorium of maximum of uh, 18 months for principal and six months on interest. Assuming you are venturing into call to uh, let's say a layer. So we don't expect you take loan and you start paying it immediately. Uh, but we allow you, well, let's say what, uh, 12 months, uh, to be able to set up the business to stabilize and uh, start generating funds and then to be able to take out the, the payments. So allow you to have that grace period. So after that, then we're not taking, uh, we're not taking our charges for me. That's why we call it moratorium. So that is uh, in terms of loan uh, pricing and training. Well, for documentation, it's very simple for individual. Uh, for individual number one, uh, let me start with number three. First, you need to undergo training uh, from our organized and capital development institute, like now National Open University, uh, that is one of the organized institutes. Uh, so when you have that training, the next thing, is to have a business plan, which I stated here, but it's part of the requirement. Um, you need to have a business plan showing um, what you intend to do, what how you went to pay the, the money, what is the economic benefits uh, of the loan or the business that you're entering into. So you need to explain all this in the business plan. Your business plan should be able to show a clear cash flow, a balance sheet, how that cash flow can be able to pay the loan without any cases. Then also, uh, if you want to apply, you need to have a DBA. Uh, bank verification number is a unique number that each and every individual have. It is distinguished one person from a person. There's no BVN that, there's no, there's no people that have the same BVN. BVN is, is assigned to each and every individual. Then um, the last one is, um, uh, duly completed. That one is online. After you must have your training certificate, you must have your business plan. The next thing is to upload the business plan and the certificate to national portal. That's that is during your presentation. After you must have so, submitted that one. So the next thing is to attend interview. I will come to that page. Okay, so this is um requirements for Incorporated entity. What I mean by by this registered company or um, company uh, business name or limited liability. I add up the two. What what you need to do? The promoter need to obtain training as outlined in the previous slide. BBN of the promoter is required. Uh, business plan of the company of the business is also required. We also, we also need evidence of registration of the business name or certificate of registration, uh, filing, in showing, uh, filing annual returns where applicable in compliance with, uh, karma 1990. Also, a team tax identification number is also required, um, showing that, um, the business owner is paying tax up to date. That's for registered 
entity. So these are the requirements for both individual and the so if you look at the both individual and registered uh, business entity, the there are four striking similarities. One, BVN. Two, training certificate. Three, business plan. Four, application form completed. These are the four um, ingredients or four component that both type must uh, must meet. It, these are the just operational requirement or steps uh, through which you can get to the final. First, you need to be trained. That's uh, that's what you need to do to attain uh, training. Then, secondly, you need to develop business plan, and then thirdly, you need to apply online, and the fourth, attend interview. The interview is nothing but just to to be able to understand the business you're venturing into uh, is actually, um, you have an idea about the business you're entering into. Not that you just wake up because my friend is doing this business, let me just uh, join the business and attend and start doing the business because my, my friend is making a lot of money, let me just join. So you need to have an idea about the business you're venturing into. That's the, the, the interview is all about. It's nothing like a uh, job interview so that uh, people should not panic. The interview is nothing, it's just, just to be able to explain what the business is all about. Then you also need to open an account with National Microfinance. That's the fifth uh, step. Then also, uh, the next step after opening an account, then you get your funds uh, credited into your account. Then also, you get support business services. That is uh, guiding you on how to be able to uh, navigate from this stage to this stage. You have a business execution plan. This is the first thing. Let's see if you have a business, a business execution plan is like uh, execution strategy. You have your money. So how do you intend to put, um, you have the money? As in to utilize your money. First, buy your equipment. Secondly, um, uh, get your food ready or vaccine ready for the uh, poultry or for the, uh, your, your uh, livestock or whatever you're doing. So these are the like execution plan. That's what we call business support services. Then make sure sell as make uh, as post, uh, as much as possible. Market your product as, as much as possible to be able to take you to ninth step. That is repay your loan. We also uh, call everyone to some size orders about loan. That, however, this loan is not free. It's not grant. It's loan that one must pay. Yeah, one must pay. Uh, it's not that you're taking the loan and go and start doing the personal, but you must pay the loan within the agreed time. It's for your own good. You allow your uh, whole uh, uh, human being also benefit from you. Too. Um, thank you so much. So um, that's all about this uh, professional overview of uh, asking. So I'll